Alrighty then, folks. Hello there, and welcome back to some more... I was gonna say Super Robot Wars. I meant, um, MS Saga. So in the last episode, we had finally taken on another fort and got us this here Zeta Gundam, which isn't fully a Zeta. It's more of a Shining Zeta. I haven't renamed it. I meant to, but I forgot. My bad. Yeah, I really should repaint them as well. But I had forgot to do something, which I should definitely have remembered to do. Because I flat out looked at them last time. Both I didn't upgrade them, I, and I didn't change the weapons. So we're actually going to take off the Zeta Rifle, because for Tristan, that's kind of useless, to be honest. And we're going to give it to Fritzy Poo. Because what's a, uh, Bezzily just got something much better. So the Gundam Rifle does 315 right now. And the Zeta Rifle does 360. In actual Gundam, that difference should be a lot bigger, but it isn't. But yeah, and we don't have to affect his stuff because we didn't actually change his loadout. Yeah, Koshiki's still the same, but the Sand Rock is different. So we're going to do melee combat here. And, you know, she'll be good with the drill because I don't really have her melee on her own very often. So that should work out just fine. And then for him, I want to do some range combat. You can snipe with the beam cannon, so that should be good. And, you know, why not give him the... The hammer? I think that would be funny. He could use the shield. And so for Tristan, can we swing the large beam rifle? No, we cannot. Unless we wanted to get rid of the shield. So let's not do that. Um, Yakoshiki beam rifle? Yeah, okay. That works for me. And can I get a bazooka of some description? Not that he really needs it. And... Hmm. So we got the shield going. We don't need to worry about that. Um, don't these in Yeah, these things increase your melee, so... I want one of those on my right. I don't think we can equip one on the left. Yeah, I thought so. And I don't think we can do that either, no. Um, is the raw... Do we have a rod beam gun? I vaguely remember having two... But that might have been... Okay, we only have one. We're actually going to take out this bazooka. This thing also increases melee. So yeah, that should be good enough. And we'll go upgrade and then we're not actually going to go fight the fort. I know I said we were in the end of the last one. But there's a couple of things I want to take care of first. We need to get Vargas a new toy. And we need to start on getting Fritz his new toy. Though Fritz's new toy is amazing. It's basically the best range mobile suit in the game. I don't know why you get it so early, but you do. Here's the annoying thing about Marie upgrading, though. So... She still charges money. I mean, like, we just went through all this help and she said she would help us any way we can. But no, she still has to charge us. It's dumb. I I'm kidding, I know that was a thing and it's just a basic game mechanic. It'd be so broken if she didn't. That'd be great. Look at that melee. Almost 300. And with a couple of small changes, we can get it even higher. Like, it's even better than that. Like, no one gets that high. Um. You know, I actually kind of like how the Zeta's colored right now. So I think we're going to keep it there. You can't get a green that'll match the, uh the body of the full armor. I probably already mentioned it, though, but... So just imagine it, their legs from the Zeon Shining Gundam. Yeah, because in some creepy reality, Zeon got the Shining. Or will normal red look better? Kind of like the Vermilion, it's more orange, but it doesn't stick out as much. Or... Yeah, the light red would be too dark. So we'll just go with it for that. For now, anyway. And then that would be the left arm. We'll just go with a basic white. Yeah, it's more of a gray, but ah oh well. I really wish the colorization system was more in-depth. So we could actually, you know, map the colors that they're using. And just be like, hey, this part has this color. I want it applied to this skin. You can do something similar to that in Gundam Breaker. Which is really cool, but you can't in this. So the first thing we're actually going to head off to do 
is we're gonna go hit uh northern canada because we get to go fight a new boss well not a new boss but we get to go start a new dungeon that we'll either finish this episode or next episode but we're supposed to go to much later than this but we're just kind of ignoring it for now we're supposed to do it before the next major dungeon But if you remember much earlier in the game, I mentioned that we could go and do it if we wanted to. I'm more surprised there isn't a random encounter up here. Because, like, I don't even know what this is. Like, some sort of weird northern Yucatan thing. Yeah, so we gotta go up here and park here. And we gotta go run down to the bottom right-hand corner. See, right above Diggins Rock. Yeah, that's where we're going. This is actually where I used to go to train. Like, no joke. Early uh, early on when I was doing that big thing of training. Yeah, but we're actually going to finish it this time. Alright, that was a wee bit rough, but it'll be better along the lines. I think the people in the dungeon aren't actually as difficult, weirdly enough. Like, we're a little bit stronger than we were before. I don't remember those fight being that hard, though. I had also totally forgotten, but Vargas has Invisible too, and we don't really use DP for much. So it might be worth going and doing. Oh my god, we're getting into a lot of combat. Alright, and in that combat we almost lost, because everyone kept getting stunned three rounds in a row. That's perfect. But anyway, folks, this is where we were heading. Yes, I know, it's exciting, right? This is the other side of the Lost City. You know those paths that, like, ended nowhere, but you could see stuff beyond? Yeah, that's where we went. So I was actually training in here, but I never did any of the set battles. Might look very familiar. So Fargus has Invisible. Oh, and while I'm here... Do you have a repair? You don't. Neither do you. You do, but I'm saving you, so we'll do it. We'll do it, Bazuli. Why not? I don't really use him for a grenade much anyway. So I didn't do any of the set battles. I literally just ran from that point back here to here. Constantly. It was very, very generic, to say the least. But yes, we are fighting Goblins. So these are uh, mobile suits from Zeta Gundam. The... I guess the most well-known for being piloted by Yazan Gable, who is the Violator dude. That did, in fact, happen. Um, they're basically a early version of a transformable mobile suit. They have two built-in guns on each arm and uh, two beam sabers that they could use. They were deemed not very effective, but when used in combat, they could do a lot of damage if you used them correctly. Um... Strangely enough, while while we might know them best for Yazan piloting one during the Rosami stuff, and I believe uh, Buren also, who piloted the Astromer at times, also used them. Weirdly enough, the most well-known thing for that would probably be for in Gaia Gear, which is a continuation of the main story that's completely non-canon. Okay, I thought he killed Fritz for a second there. But yeah, in Gaia Gear, weirdly enough, uh, Char, or at least a clone of Char, from some random island in the Pacific, actually finds a Goplant, and that's how he gets to civilization. Bet you weren't expecting that. Let me use the Zeta Beam Rifle on you. Oh, and weirdly enough, the grenade launcher isn't actually a grenade launcher. It's more of like a machine gun. And yeah, I know I could switch to other people, but meh. I have that much yet. 
or that much HP. Yeah, sadly, we can't loot the arm-mounted guns on them. It'd be cool if we could, but we can't. I don't believe in this game we ever actually get the chance to have a god plant either. Weirdly enough, that fight's one of the harder ones. The rest are pretty easy, comparatively. But I'd prefer a save point as soon as we can get one. Yeah, it's over there. I believe over there is the correct way to go. But we're going to go hit the save point that's over here. Come on. So I don't know why, but the game runs both super well and then randomly chunky right now. I have no idea. Like, before it was running perfectly fine, it's just being weird now. Which, maybe because I upgraded my computer from Windows 10 Home to Windows 10 Pro, something is messed up. But I've never had that issue on anything else besides PCSX today. Like, other games were running at 144 perfectly fine, but this one has problems. Hmm... I hate all of the people here. Mainly because I'm pretty sure these are the guys where you have to grenade them to death. Fuck that. Yeah, we want to kill the blue guys first because they're more of a pain in the butt. Mm-hmm. All right, those are the guys you have to funnel and grenade to death. That's good. Sweet. That helps a lot, actually, because I was going to say, we'll just switch uh, Tristan to Aeon and kind of roll with it, but that works. Um... We're gonna funnel with her, and then we're going to mega grenade this guy, and then high bomber these other two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, those guys aren't hard, they're just annoying. Because, like, I understand having enemies that are, like, limited to what you can hit, you can actually hit them with. But the fact that they're just immune to everything but techniques just means I have to use a character who has a technique, and... Yeah, you know, that's just a lot of work. Once we find the one chest we're looking for, though, we're gonna leave. I guess we could finish up the dungeon if you guys want me to, but... For now, we can just kind of ignore it. Sort of drink DX. Vargas, get with the invisible again. I don't think these are the chests that have it, though. I think there's a good melee weapon in here. Oh, no, they are. So, spoiler alert, we're building a spaceship eventually. Yeah, you're supposed to go here to unlock it. Way later in the game. And the bow data. That's what we came here for. We want that goddamn bow. Eh, we'll look later. Um, is this just an empty pipe? Yeah, it is. Um, you know what? I don't mind finishing this off. And then after that, I'll head back to Diggins Rock and I'll go grab some more, a bunch more items. Maybe grind up some money if possible. Oh, hey, Cubelays. That's interesting. These are, uh, AMX04, I believe, Cubelays. They were a prototype mobile suit developed during the Zeta era or the Grips conflict by Neo Zeon on Axis, who had just recently re-entered the war. They had, about a year and a half earlier, started heading towards the planet, and by this point in the story, they had actually arrived. They were the first to be a practical application of bits in the form of funnels, because the old funnels were these 
big things that were like the size of a mobile suit and tend to break down fairly often. These funnels were very, very small, about the size of a mobile suit's hand, and they could do a lot more damage and actually fire a couple of more times before needing to be recharged, thus making them super deadly. You might know them best by Haman using them, which is kind of how I knew about them, but they would be used by other people like uh, the Play Clones in the next series, um, like they even cloned up to 30 of them. There's even a flashback of Merida using one in Unicorn. They're one of the more noticeable mobile suits, um, mainly because its design is just so different from all the others. But the reason why is because I forget his last name, but Kunio, the guy who developed it originally, um, actually does this story, this manga or this light novel called Five Ring Story. Oh, hey, serpents and an all repair. We got to kill that guy. But he had a lot more night themed mobile suits. And it was kind of like a Dune-esque, like, post-apocalyptic thing where uh, mobile suits were like... Actually, it's a little bit closer to Mech Warrior than anything. But mobile suits were like... Um, things you would build for your dynasty and you'd pay engineers who were basically immortal to maintain them for like thousands of years. It was kind of strange, but I do really enjoy those stories and you should check them out if it's vaguely interesting. I can't do much to explain them myself. But I really enjoy the mech designs even to the point where my tri my Twitter avatar for the longest time was their pseudo Sazabi. I absolutely adore it. But yeah, so these other guys are serpents. They're um they were guerrilla mobile suits developed during the Wing series by the Barton Foundation or for the rebels for the Barton Foundation, who was the guy who piloted the Sandrock. Um they would basically create a cult of personality around his dad and be used for various guerrilla operations. Um, I believe the last time we saw them were in Endless Waltz, where they were mentioned but never really used. Though I think the ending bad guys did look quite a bit like them, and I could be wrong. But they're pretty cool little suits, but they're not like the most technologically advanced things in the world. But they were a whole lot better than anything else they had at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll notice experience-wise, they're not much better than what we were fighting before. But we're not supposed to go here for quite a while. So, eh, I don't know. Oh. Okay. I thought that was a really good melee weapon we'd get way later in the game, but eh, maybe it wasn't. Maybe I was remembering on the other side. Double arm guard. Double arm guard. 35 armor, 15 speed. And this is 12 armor, negative 7 speed. Anyone need something like that? Or have room for it? 7, 4... Eh, we'll deal with that later. It's not important. I thought that was something much better. Like, there's one melee weapon that you could get similar to that that's like... Or similar in, to a place like that that's really freaking useful. But I guess not. I hadn't noticed it before, but the shield on this thing is really pink. Like, compared to the shoulders from the Shining Gundam. It's like really pink. Hey, Masalas. I don't like those things. They're kind of a pain in the ass to fight. So those... Have I already explained Masalas? I don't remember if I have or not. But those are the first of Shirako's inventions, or at least the first ones we've seen. His real first one was a Masala that was shaped like a raptor. Like, not kidding, that's a thing. 
It's uh, the Dino Fask, I believe, is its official name. Or the Masala Raptor, depending. But yeah, those were one of the first of Shrako's creations. He piloted it when he tried to murder all the civilians in the beginning of Zeta for a reason that'll never be explained and kind of went against his character, but whatever. Um, it has two very large, almost ship-grade Mega Particle Cannons mounted on its shoulders. I believe it also had two grenade launchers built into each arm and the ability to use a beam saber. Um, the problem with it is it ridiculously slow and ridiculously big, being about the size of a shuttle. So it was eventually discontinued as uh, he choose he chose like other things like the O, which was a giant slab of metal. I don't know if that's in this game. It was a giant slab of metal designed to be coated against beams by just being too thick, or the Palisathene, which was built out of missiles basically, and it had uh, exploding shield similar to the Gion. I think we actually get that eventually, just not right now. Um, I've, I've already mentioned the Palace Athene when we got that mounted arm gun way earlier in the story. This might have been the one I was thinking about with the really good melee weapon. I could be wrong. Hmm. Oh, okay, so this is one of the ones that goes over the other one. I was like, wait, are we about to meet up with the other place? I didn't know that was possible. Yeah, I'm going to try to get the Masalas out of the way first. Stab that guy. You're gonna switch out for Aeon. Who's going to mega fire with the beam cannon on that guy, and you're gonna switch out for Trimi. Who's going to look at his yeah, you're not very good at that, so you're gonna lightning lancer that guy. You'll go first though, so you'll probably kill him. That works. So it's good to know they have about 600 HP left. I just imagine Aeon ran up, stuck the shotgun in its face and pulled the trigger, and just disintegrated underneath the bullet. Just in case we run into any more shotgunners. And yeah, I'll pick up some more of these uh, in between episodes. I'll do a little bit more grinding, get some more E-caps. Um, now that we got the gal back, we can do that. And then get some more money, buy a bunch more items. Maybe we'll sell some older stuff as well. Um, because of how long this video is, I'm pretty sure I won't be able to... Uh, and how big this dungeon is comparatively. I don't think I'll be able to build the bow on screen. But you guys have seen it before. Maybe I'll record it and include it in the beginning of the next video. Hey, Battle Asmers. So these are basically Asmers Kai. They're just... You know, a different color. That's all. Some sort of weird grayish, I guess. And then the Dwadage Kai. I guess this is similar to the Dwadage Reform that uh, Desert Rommel used in Double Zeta. Basically, it was the Dwadage which was built on the end of the One Year War, modified with a larger reactor and the ability, basically with a ship's reactor, I should say, 
and a much faster mobile suit due to uh, better fuel, I guess, propellant. It's not really covered as to how he did that, but he had been fighting since the One Year War and they had been having to raid Federation supply colony, uh, convoys for parts to the point where they mounted a Zaku head on a truck. I still don't know why that's a thing, but that's a thing that they did. But yeah, Desert Rommel's cool. He's kind of an asshole. But yeah, he's named after the World War II general. Got lucky there. Yeah, so we got three paths to go. I think we'll go left or right. Unless this one loops back up with one of those ones up there. Yeah, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Oh, before I forget though, technique, Bazuli. Miss having Resner. The only thing she was good about was having repair. And, you know, doing more melee damage than Tree Me, but that wasn't to be expected for the longest time because, you know, she was going to leave us anyway. So of course she had good stats. And if we weren't the right level, she would have been more powerful than Tristan, but meh, I grinded. Oh, great. All my favorite enemies in one battle. Luckily, I forgot about Tree Me, so we can just Speed Lancer the all repair. That was just asking to be a bad idea. So, um, Aeon. You can fund Narutachi. And Bazuli. You can shoot all Narutachi. Oh, I meant to use the... I meant to use the melee weapon. My bad. And he learned Giga Flame. That was the upgraded version of Shoot All. Basically the satellite cannon from Double X. Super useful if you have the TP for that, but there's no way to get... Well, there's no easy way to get starting TP to 7. There is a way. You use the, the internal energy capacitor and then the uh, double booster to get up to 6. And then you have a mobile suit that has one extra energy at the beginning. And then you can get up to 70 to use Gigafire in the beginning, but I don't like doing that, so we don't end up doing that. Oh. Ixo, I guess? What do they got here? I honestly don't remember, to be honest. Oh! Zaku 3! With a arm-mounted machine gun, a double beam gun, and two of the James gun cannons on the shoulder. So, that's not what they're called. I think they're like Gatling cannons or something like that, but I, I always forget. So, basically, that is a Zaku 3 developed near the end of the neo Zeon conflict. It was supposed to be the successor to the widely popular Zaku 2, but it wasn't nearly the... Uh, performance that Haman had wanted 
So it became more of a aces or a specialist unit instead of the mass production unit that she had wanted. Mainly because also at the time their mass production units were legitimately using, uh... You know what, I'm gonna have Fritz Chaffield. That'll be fun. Um, the units they were using at the time were mostly U-type suits and were able to do much better than anything that the Zaku could have done. Though a couple of you people, like my cello and a few of the Royal Guard did, in fact, use Zaku, Zaku 3s, they weren't as super popular as they could have been. Oh, Gatling Punch. That I wasn't expecting. Not expecting in the least. Alright. I think this is actually the first time I've had to use a regeneration kit, too. I could be wrong. I probably am, but I was not expecting that. That's cool. Um, so the Royal Guard would eventually actually use the bow instead. Which we're about to get soon, and is one of my favorite mobile suits, though we only get the Glemmy version in this game, which is kind of disappointing, but oh well. Watch, this is the point where he uses a ranged attack instead. He really hates people in that slot. Just saying. Alright, so the next one after he charges this time will be Gatling Fire again, so we'll use Chaffield then. Because he has at least one uh, non beam weapon, thus, uh, Gatling Fire will be made useless. So we're gonna charge with Fritz there, and then we'll switch to Bazuli. And then watch, this is also the time he uses Gatling Fist again, or Gatling Punch. I kind of wasted that repair all since Tristan's the only one who needed to re be repaired, but oh well. Alright, so... You can power charge. You will chaff. And you're going to switch to Vargas, who is going to charge. Or you'll die. That works, too. That was a fun fight, actually. I quite enjoyed that. Um, we will eventually gain Zaku 3s, but that's much later in the game. Also cool. I wasn't expecting us to get both shoulder shields, but I'm pretty sure that's a guaranteed thing. Come on. All right. Um. First off, though. Uh. Oh, was that not considered a boss fight? That's funny. Perfect Zeong. Yeah, the guard lancers. Zaku Shodol. 
Gatling Zaku, that's what it's called. Yeah, so it's basically guaranteed to get both shoulder shields. That was interesting. I totally had forgotten that was a thing. That was a fun fight. That's like why I like going into random dungeons that I haven't been to in a few years. Also, more spacecraft data. Awesome. We're basically going to have enough data to build the thing by the time we leave, but we'll have the story event to where we have to build the thing. Which, I'm pretty sure that was one of the things where, like, even if you already have the data before you do that battle, he's still like, what took you so long to get this? It's like, dude, we haven't left the room. I just pulled it from behind my back and shoved it in your face. Yeah, I'm just going to have this one a really long episode, and I'll cut out the battles. The early battles that you guys didn't need to see, but while we were walking in here. Those were interesting, but they weren't that interesting. We basically already covered the same ground, so what's the point? Oh, god damn it. It's these guys again. Alright, so, find Naritachi, Mega Bomb that guy, I, oh, eh, high repair's fine. I saw high, I was like, yeah, high bomber. No. That works. I don't imagine the guy in the middle having more than 1500, though he does have one of those Gion Plasma Lances, so if he melees, we're basically guaranteed to overheat. I output beam rifle. Um, appearance-wise, I'm pretty sure that's the, uh, the Bows beam rifle. But I could be wrong. It might be the Ghiridogas, and I'm just missing it. Though, that being said, I don't believe the Ghiridoga or the Yegin are actually, uh, usable mobile suits in this game. Which is kind of disappointing. I think we fight them, but we don't get to use them. And if you're, if you are curious, that was a Zaku 3. I don't know why it goes from like a GM or a Nemo to a Zaku 3, but it does. Yeah, this is another one of those weird things where it's like, okay, so they stopped building the road into this cave. All right, then. Sweet. I believe we have three E-caps now. I don't know what we need to build with those three, but I think we have them. Uh, though we will need to save one, because I'm pretty sure when we get Fritz's next mobile suit, it doesn't come with an E-cap. Either it's that one or the one after it that doesn't come with an E-cap, which is kind of annoying, because you don't get another E-cap for a while. But I don't remember exactly the point where in the game they wanted you to get them. Oh. Alright. Yeah, so you need the level 4 key, uh, card key for that. We get a level 4 card key eventually. We have the 3 right now. And if you remember back on the moon arc, there was a 5. Yeah, we get up to 5. Though I believe everything behind the 5s, except for one location, are basically worthless. That did not last very long at all.
We might be escaping from here very, very soon. finish this up as much as we can so we don't have to come back here later i will probably come here at, uh off camera to go do that thing with the card key because i can't imagine like anything we actually need is locked behind that but i could be wrong i think uh the spaceship or the spacecraft is one of the few things we need 99 data for in the game and we've collected like what 48 right now i think I'm pretty sure some random character gives us 10 more, like, Oh yeah, we found this, like, sitting in a box in the attic. Here, have some spaceship data. But we'll, we'll go over that when we get to it. Just some old grandma pulls a box out. I had this since I was a girl. It's only enough, enter or enough data to build your own giant fucking death machine. Yeah, my daddy gave it to me. He said one day I should take over the world using the chi system. I always thought he was crazy, though. I don't know what kind of accent that was. It was like somewhere between uh, Southern Bell and Crazy Terrorist. Oh, God. I hate terror all. All right, so he's both afraid and shocked. Like, the battle right before we got in here literally uh, either shocked all or terrored all of us, like, five times. In a row. And it wasn't even like some people got shocked and some didn't. It was the entire party got shocked every single time. I believe fear lowers the damage we do. But, with how much HP they had, literally any attack would have dealt with it. Plus, this way I don't have to waste one of those meds. And we're never getting back into Tohai, so we can never get more of those. Sadly. Oh. Um. Seriously, maybe I need to update NVIDIA or something? You know, upgrade the graphics driver? I don't know what's going on, or maybe you have to upgrade, uh, or update PCSX. But it just, like, randomly flashes, and I have no idea why. I was playing Zeta vs. Zeta Gun or Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam earlier, and running perfectly fine, like, I didn't have any issues. And then it's just this game that does. Then again, this game is, like, really hard to emulate for some reason. Like, no one's computer can run it well. It's like, you would target Tristan. You would. Though you have left him with the best amount of HP. Hey, Fritz got repair all. Fuck yeah. That's the ability that fully repairs you. I believe it costs like 30 TP though, or something ridiculous like that. Oh no, that is to all allies. Never mind. I'm pretty sure the full repair's ability is called like full repair or something like that. Do you already have it? Yeah, you do. So yeah, I wasted a little bit of TP there, but it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yep, 20 more spaceship data and three E-caps. Woo! That's what we needed, E-caps. Alright. So. Now we'll head back to... Somewhere? 
Um, where do we have a G system that we can use? We can use the one in Isengrad. They're not smart enough to, you know, lock that thing down or anything. We'll go build the battle and then I'll end the episode. My apologies that it was so long, but I was actually kind of having fun in that dungeon. Because I actually had to, like, think about things. Versus just kind of skating through till we got a boss fight like I usually do. Luckily, we shouldn't have any random encounters on the way here. And then we'll throw away the Mark II and, you know, get a bow. I don't really think anyone gets the Mark II after this, because nobody needs it. But yeah, we'll head back to Marie's to sleep, then I'll go do maybe a level or two of grinding in between this and the next episode. And then I'll go, or I'll just, you know, spend some of our ample amounts of money to go buy some more repair kits. And then we'll just go do the next dungeon. We'll do the next uh, fort, and then we'll probably go do Mount Trial, which should get us closer to getting Fritz's mobile suit. So when it runs, uh, they try to make it look like the leg or the foot like bends a little bit, but it's actually just glitching into the floor. Like, look at this. It's super trippy. Anyway. Ah, oh, we need 10 more bow data. Um, I will, on my own time, I'll go look up how to get it. It's probably something obvious that we missed. Like, we got Fall Dust, we got the Mobile Suit Coliseum, we got it the pass passageway in the very beginning. That's creepy. When I googled MS Saga, one of my videos came up. There's some in Diggins Rock. Fall Dust, the Mobile Suit Coliseum, the Lost City. ever get that I really need to turn off system sounds on my computer though they annoy me more than they should yeah so I'm I'll check Diggins Rock if it's not there I'll figure out where it isn't or where it is and that I missed where is Diggins Rock there you are Yeah, we looted Fall Dust because we did that in the very beginning. I got the one in the Mobile Suit Coliseum. Where could it be? Yeah, we already looted here. Did I never go to the underground tunnel in this save? Is that the issue? It's entirely possible. Um, but anyway, folks, that'll be that. Um, if in the next episode, we'll go build the bow. After I pick up a bunch of items, we'll build the bow, and then we'll... Uh, we won't actually be able to afford to upgrade it, so I might just do some grinding in between this and the next episode. We'll get the bow, we'll build it, we'll give it to Vargas. We'll go do Fort Arid. And then in the episode after that, we'll go do Mount Trial. I'll probably get to the final boss of the first part of Mount Trial. And then I'll just cut it and beat it on my own. Because that battle literally takes like 30 attempts. This is one of the few battles that you can't use a cheat to get through. And by a cheat, I mean uh, Beam Field, Chaff Field, or Counter Snipe. But yeah, anyway, folks, if you enjoyed the episode, you should like. If you didn't, you should dislike. We'll be back for more next week.
Good night, folks. Hey, folks. So, I have found it. I found where I had gone wrong. I, I thought I'd grabbed this on camera, but I might have forgotten. I might have just grabbed it on my own and then meant to show you guys and forgot to save. Which is most likely. This is where that last bit about it is. Oh. I just wasted a hacking tool. Psychomu. Also super useful. Pro I might give that to a Aeon instead of the biocomputer. Yeah, there's the bio data. And this is a Gears, not a Gears, uh, Galgu Z Zulu Shield Kai. It's not very useful though, so we're just kind of going to ignore it. Basically, it's a little bit better than the Mark II Shield, but it's much bigger, so it doesn't really work with our purposes. So yeah, sorry I had forgotten about that. Um, beginning of next episode, we'll build the bow. Anyway, folks, good night.